So the 2023 season hasn't really gone to plan at the moment, with most of the meetings that have been scheduled so far being rained off. The first event of the year actually took place on time at Nottingham back on the 5th of March, but since then almost every single event has been cancelled. In fact, right up to this day now, uh, 17 meetings uh, that were scheduled have been cancelled due to the weather, and that's only left uh, this first opening round of the season to run up until Scunthorpe managed to put their meeting on just a week ago on the 26th of March. Now, up until that weekend, uh, it was looking like Scunthorpe would follow the other events that were slowly being cancelled away due to the uh, relentless rain that we've had over the country, and uh, it really was looking like a bleak start to the year, with uh, meeting after meeting falling by the wayside, and still there are clubs which are uncertain whether their first events of 2023 are actually going to go ahead as they have them planned so far but uh, the weather sort of started to work in the favour of the Scunthorpe and Districts Motorsports Club as uh, with their venue being one of the very best uh, with the draining process and being able to be accessed uh, pretty much all the time to be able to work on the track and the venue uh, it suddenly started to form in good terms and by the time we got to the end of that week on the Friday there were only a few puddles left standing and that was the same on Saturday but by Sunday there was nearly none left and we had a pretty decent racing surface ready for the uh, meeting that was due to take place. Now with all the other events cancelling and people being so desperate to get racing um, it was a expected that a big turnout was going to happen and in fact around 240 cars attended that meeting from all over the autographs world we had them from uh, I don't think there was any Scottish cars there but there were some from down uh, Kent and the southern region with Wessex and South Somerset across to Wales and even Ireland people were that desperate to race they even uh, booked a ferry and made the journey over to uh, the uh, blustery Blyton uh, the home Home of Scunthorpe Autograss Club, of course, and uh, they they wanted to have a good time and some great days racing. But uh, apart from those 240 out of those, we're going to focus on those who are interested in the CGTRO National Qualifying Campaign. Uh, for those who aren't aware, this is for those who have a men's racing license, and they will go into various qualification races. And then at the end of that little mini series. Uh, it will be decided who has the most points and they will be the ones who will represent the CGTRO League at the upcoming National Autograss Championships. So how does national qualifying work? Well, this can vary depending on the league. Some do it where they just hold uh, three heats throughout the day, um, or they could run two heats and finals, and this is open to every driver to mix in. This is a visiting drivers and the host league of their drivers. They will all be a part of it. But uh, the CGTRO League have adopted a format which has been more popular in the Yorkshire regions throughout the years, and that is they will start the meeting with separate qualification races for their own members who are interested in taking part and actually wanting to go and represent the league at that year's national championships. Now the rules can be a little bit complex and they do vary and change over the uh, years uh, depending on if they the, they feel they need to have any rule changes uh, along the way to suit uh, how the format works and just fine tune it and make it fairer for their fellow races. Uh, a couple of changes happened for the CGTRO League. The main one is that uh, last year in 2022 then all drivers managed to have a drop score so they could drop their worst points finishing score and uh, the, just the remaining races would count but uh, on this occasion for this year there are no drop scores so all eight point scoring races will count. So eight races, this will take place at uh, four separate events, uh, two at Scunthorpe and two at Sturton and Stone Motorsports Club. Um, 
there used to be uh, a venue held by Trent Autographs Club, but now, at the moment, I can't confirm for certain, but it appears that the club only um, exists at the moment by word of mouth and name, because uh, all of their members have now relocated to different clubs. Some have stayed within the league, going to Scunthorpe and Sturton, but others have actually gone elsewhere. So very sadly, this is going to have to be for a, a video another time. It is sounding like Trent Autographs Club may not be uh, an existing club any longer but we still have two within the league and there will be two rounds taking place at Scunthorpe and two rounds taking place at Sturton uh, and then from there the eight races all the points will get added up and uh, then we will know who has uh, scored the most and who is likely to get a qualification place now even if they are top two say in their class that doesn't mean they're going to get a place because this all comes down to the allocations and it depends on when uh, they release uh, those uh, the sports governing body the national Autograph sport association it depends when they release those um details out to all the leagues this takes place after a certain cutoff date when all the allocations go in and numbers uh, from each league per, for each class they can then work out who is going to get these places and it gets divided throughout all of the leagues within the sport Another change which has been brought in for 2023 is that they've limited the number of cars that can take place in each race. Obviously in Autographs it is a maximum 8 car grid for any class, but after a few issues last year it has been decided that all classes will only have a maximum of 6 cars. Uh, taking part in each class. Now unfortunately I don't think this quite worked out so well for our league this year. Uh, numbers are down. There were 60 cars in total throughout the 11 classes for uh, the qualification process. All 11 classes have at least one car uh, in it but um, numbers are down. Last year there were 78 competitors in the qualifying races. This year only 60 so quite a big drop actually from the previous year. Uh, class 1 had the most representation with 13 cars which is actually one up compared to last year but uh, this goes right down to uh, classes with uh, only one car which was class 9 and Stockach. The classes which really this new rule change has hurt the most is classes 7 and 8 because they only had 7 competitors in each class for qualifying and it's a bit uh, underwhelming to see 3 and 4 car heats when we could have qualified easily have contended with a full heat of seven and it would have made better racing closer racing and the drivers would have to fight more for those all important points but we wasn't expecting obviously the sudden uh, change in numbers for this year compared to last and um, it, I'm sure it will all be reviewed and looked at again for next year but at the moment slightly disappointing but we'll see what round two will bring uh, when we get to that event in due course. So we're going to look at all 11 classes then within the qualifying campaign and see how each driver is doing after the opening two races. All is not lost, uh, but all the points make prizes if you've had a poor opening uh, couple of races. So uh, we're going to take a look and see how everybody's getting on. Beginning with class one, as said, it was the biggest field of 13 cars. A couple of spinners to start it off, uh, unfortunately. Gavin Winter and uh, Mick West both took a spin a piece uh, at the beginning of their opening race which didn't uh, really help them uh, much good but uh, getting out in front of the first race was Darren Ince in the uh, Sturton 117 his Toyota Yaris leading that race pretty much all the way he was chased by Brandon Glover in the only mini in the lineup in uh, his Scunthorpe 171 car and Tom Fellows uh, finished third in his micro so making it three different cars in the top three um, Gav and uh, Mick then recovered to finish fourth and fifth Race 2 saw a familiar number but a different name. The Scunthorpe 25 is no longer Ian Ullathorne. He has left Scunthorpe Club after starting there in the juniors way back in the early 2000s and uh, achieved a lot of success over the years but he's moved on to uh, pastures new in a different club a different league and that number has been taken up by class 2 national champion 
Craig Conway. So he's now running the SC25. He had to make an early pass on Jordan Painter in the Scunthorpe 364 to take the win in that race. And further back then, Simon Bates in Scunthorpe 117 finished third. And Trevor Lent in the Sturton 162 was the last of the runners in his Micra. Race three saw a brief bit of contact then between Oliver Greystone in his Sturton 66 car and Craig Grimbleby in his Scunthorpe 60. Yaris, but uh, Greystone was able to pull away and take his first win since graduating from the juniors, starting his campaign off in the best way possible. Grimbleby actually dropped to third and finished behind Jordan Julian, another debutante uh, in the Scumfort 32 car, which was formerly raced by Carly Williams, but has now decided to hang up her racing boots. And uh, Jordan then made a good use of the car to take second ahead of Grimbleby, while third was James Penning, uh, who uh, took fourth, sorry, uh, to uh, round out uh, his race in the, uh, uh, I think he's running another Micra. Um, round two then saw red flags, a bungee fault uh, at the start of the first race, but once that got uh, all up and sorted, it was Conway who took a clear win this time around from Ince and Winter, who uh, did one place better this time, taking third. So uh, Craig Conway won from Darren Ince and Gavin Winter in third, with Mick West and Tom Fellows completing that uh, running order. Race two saw a bit of play swapping going on, but it was Craig Grimbleby who would take his first, I think, race win in Autographs. Um, he would win that one from Oliver Greystone, who was left in second, with uh, Trevor Lent and uh, James Penning rounding out the order and then the final race saw a good battle actually which Jordan Painter was the one to win it from Brandon Glover in that mini once again and then uh, we had Simon Bates and uh, Jordan Julian the uh, last one to finish to uh, round out uh, the class one um, race order. So, looking at uh, the points after those opening two races, then Craig Conway is the one on two wins on uh, 110 points. You get 55 for a victory, remember. Uh, three drivers tie second place then. Darren Ince, Jordan Painter and Oliver Greystone sit on 100. Brandon Glover is in fifth in uh, Scumport 171 on 90 points. Craig Grimbleby is there on 76, just ahead of Jordan Julian, who's on 73. One point behind Simon Bates is there on 72. Then we have three more drivers tied towards the tail end of the point standings. All three Sturton cars. We have uh, Gavin Winter in Sturton 35, Trevor Lent in Sturton 162, James Penning in Sturton 16 on 64 points each. Tom Fellows then had uh, one decent result, one poor result in Scumfort 98 on 57 points. And it didn't go to plan for Mick West in Scumfort 132. He is there at the bottom of the table on 49. On to Class 3 then, which had five starters and uh, some close racing in this one between uh, the uh, leading uh, pair of Rich Lee and Tony Goodsir. Lee would actually lead the opening portion of the first race, but Goodsir would find a gap on the inside and go through in the Scunthorpe 307, while Cash Yeardley sat there a close third in uh, Scunthorpe 96. He's made the switch over from Sturton to Scunthorpe this year, and that's how it finished once Goodsir got ahead he managed to hold on and take the win ahead of uh, Lee and Yeardley. Problems for the two Chevy powered machines further back near Rawlinson's uh, brand new Austin A40 uh, I think suffered engine failure on Scumfort 13 uh, smoking quite badly by the race end where, while John Farrer uh, made a very slow start in his new uh, Peugeot 206 shelled machine Sturt 44 and he finished a lap down actually uh, on uh, the lead trio. Uh, race 2 saw the roles reverse though. Um, it was uh, good sir who made the best start but then Rich Lee managed to find a way past and uh, moved ahead 
to even the score and take the win. Uh, Yeardley still sat there in third, so consistent scoring for him with two third places. We have uh, John Farrer taking fourth as Neil Rawlinson, it did prove terminal, sadly, wasn't able to start the second heat. So uh, as quick as you go, class threes then, uh, just the five of them. But we have some interesting scoring with uh, Tony Goodsir and Rich Lee sitting tied on 100 points with a first and a second each. Cash Yeardley then consistency, as I said, two third places, meaning 72 points. Still a good to haul for him. Uh, work to do then for the remaining pair. John Farrer in Sturton 44 sits on 49 points, while Neil Rawlinson uh, has got uh, obviously teething issues, but quite a serious one by the look of things in Scunthorpe 13, and he's there only on 28 points. Moving on to class five then, uh, just the two starters. Unfortunately, they didn't make it to the end of the day. Uh, Dan Lodge, uh, former national champion in Scumbo 212, ran away with the first race, taking a uh, clear victory over Patrick Emerson, who's a uh, one of those Trent uh, movers. He's now Scunthorpe 21, but uh, Lodge took the win, but a smoky end meant uh, he would retire after that race and not start race two. Patrick Emerson finished in that second position uh, and also non-started the second heat. So it just means one point score apiece for both of those. And that means that Lodge then sits on 55 points just 10 ahead of Emerson, who is there on 45, but he would have been ahead had he been able to start his second heat. The Super Saloons come next then, Class 7, the class which obviously builds a lot of interest. And uh, it was surprising to see that we was down to 7 starters this year after I think uh, maybe 11 or 12 in 2022. But uh, it's just sign of the times maybe and there's not as many out there. But uh, we still saw some good racing from these but it was a bit disappointing to see 3 and 4 car grids of course instead of a full grid of 7. But anyway, that's the rules, that's how it works. So uh, race one then saw a good battle between Chaz Edley who's uh, returning after a bit of time out in Scunthorpe 69 and uh, he's uh, there been racing against uh, Dan Johnson in Scunthorpe 383 who was the first rollover of the year back at Nottingham. Uh, he's keeping himself planted on the ground now in that scunny car and we saw a good little battle between the pair and that sort of resolved after Edley pulled a big wheelie and it sort of unsettled his momentum and and that let uh, Johnson go through and he then uh, went uh, clear to uh, take the race win with Edley remaining in second. There was a close battle for third. Last year's national finalist Jake Lee has got work to do. He got the better of Tom Page in Scunthorpe 19 in this race and uh, they, they were the ones to finish third and fourth out of that uh, little squad. Race two then saw multiple national champion and defending Baz champion Andy Holtby uh, dominate pretty much in uh, Scunthorpe 61. The Chevy working very well on the grippy surface and uh, took a, a very easy win in the end. Jamie Hornby has uh, stolen uh, Abby Shields at Class 7 for qualifying and is now Sturton 74. And he ran second nearly all the way, but then lost out to uh, Class Newcomer Archie Carter in Scunthorpe 17, who's graduated from the Junior Specials class. And uh, he managed to nip past and take second place on the last corner ahead of uh, the mistake-making Hornby. Round two then saw Holtby out first and just once again run away with it in that Scunny 61. Uh, nobody was going to stop him through qualifying. Um, a good battle for second place. Saw Tom Page and Dan Johnson fighting it out. But again, a mistake on the last corner from Page. Saw Johnson go through and uh, take the second position um, with uh, Tom Page uh, sitting there in third ahead of Jake Lee 
who uh, struggled at this time around and sat back in fourth position. Uh, race two saw Chaz Edley on good form here, leading all the way in Scunthorpe 69 uh, to take his first win of the qualifying campaign. Second place then um, was Archie Carter, who uh, once again, a mistake for Jamie Hornby, a half spin over cooking it, lost him that second position, and that let the Scunthorpe 17 driver go ahead and take his second second place of the day. Uh, over to the points then, Holtby, no surprise, two wins out of two, 110 points. Dan Johnson and Chaz Edley find themselves tied on 100 in second place. With Archie Carter then, a very good start for that young man. He sits third in Scunthorpe 17 on 90. Jamie Hornby then is there on 72 points in fifth. Jake Lee and Tom Page have got it all to do. They were they are down at the back in joint six um, on 64 points. On to class nine, just the one starter, and that was Sam Middleton, who's a now Scunthorpe 909, uh, taking his old 909 number back, but uh, now with the Scunthorpe prefix, and it wasn't a good day for him. He set off in his first heat, and uh, instantly a big cloud of smoke, and he had to shut the car off, and uh, that was his day done. Uh, apparently the oil filter had managed to come off, uh, whether it was uh, loosened by himself or by somebody else, uh, that remains to be answered. But unfortunately it meant Sam Middleton wouldn't be uh, finishing his qualifying races and wouldn't get to uh, start uh, any of them or claim any points after that. So uh, it was a disappointing day and start to his year. But with the only starter, he gets on the board but still sits there with zero points. Uh, another class which has... Uh, just the one starter and that is the stock catch. We haven't been very well supported in stock catches as of late uh, but it's good that we've at least got one and that's uh, former class 2 national champion Dave Terry then in uh, the Sturton 12 Citroen AX and uh, all he had to do was a lap in each go. He, the bungee went up, he drove around, did one lap and bagged his points so um, we may get some more joining in later on but at the moment he's the only one and uh, he has to start those races and take a checkered flag to score those points and that's what he did so he sits there on 110 points for uh, just being there really but you've got to be there if you want to earn it so um, there we go and he's on his way to the nationals at the moment providing we get a place of course Class 2 only had 9 cars which meant a split of a 5 and a 4 but we still got the close racing that we always expect. Christian Hall in Scumbop 227 and Josh Julian in Scumbop 22 began their day long battle and they squabbled with, for the lead here in uh, this opening race and it was Julian who actually got ahead. Uh, to take the first win of the campaign uh, with Hall sitting right with him in second. George Cresswell kept them honest in Scumbot 127 and he ran third throughout in his Micra just ahead of James Frecknell in Scumthorpe 64 who switched from a Nova to a Micra this year with Rob Blackburn in Scumthorpe 108 having a few problems on board of his Micra but he managed to take the checkered flag in fifth place. Race two saw uh, Adam Pickersgill spin out in Scumthorpe 109 but he recovered to finish third um, but up front Simon Overty led all the way in his new Micra in Scumthorpe 18 ahead of Jay Albrighton in Scumthorpe 156. They finished at 1 and two, while Pickersgill recovered to third as mentioned, passing Matthew Siner uh, in Scumfort 107, who's now got a Nova after running a Corsa for some of last year, and that's how they finished uh, with Pickersgill third and Siner finishing fourth. Uh, round two saw Adam Pickersgill then redeem himself as he took a win in Scumfort 109, uh, with Jay Albrighton taking another second place in Scumfort 156 ahead of uh, George Cresswell with uh, James Frecknell and Matthew Siner um, having their own little uh, battle at the back of the order in fourth and fifth. While another close uh, squabble in race two between uh, Christian Hall and Josh Julian saw Hall even the score this time around, taking uh, the victory from uh, Josh Julian. Simon Overton was right there with him in third in Scumthorpe 18 with Rob Blackburn uh, once again relegated to the back of the pack 
and he rounded out the order in fourth position. The points then, very close as you'd expect with Class 2. Josh Julian and Christian Hall sit tied at the top on 100 points each. Uh, just uh, behind Simon Overty and Adam Pickersgill then a first and a third means 91 points. Just nine off the top so it's not far away at all uh, but they sit there joint third. Jay Albright and then two second places and he's fifth. Uh, that's how tight it is. He's on 90 points. He's got 156. George Cresswell, two third places, means sixth position in the table. He's there on 72. James Frecknell in Scumbop 64, another one consistent with two fourth places, 56 points for him. While at the back, Scumbop 107 and 108, Matthew Siner uh, is there and Rob Blackburn uh, both on 49 points. On to class four then, uh, Jason Miller uh, with a reshelled uh, Citroen C2 uh, class of four. Um, look to be the winner leading the way uh, of the five car field in the, the, the fours. Uh, good to see uh, a few of them out there as well. But as uh, Miller was looking good, the car started to go sick and right on the last lap it started to falter and uh, he would end up losing not just the lead but every point available because he failed to finish stopping just a few yards short of the finish line and it meant no points scored for him. Cashing in first though was Sadie Hausman in the Mini Sturton 113. She was there ready to pounce and took the lead and the win ahead of her dad John Hausman in Sturton 13 who ended up second place in his Micra with Craig Coupland. Uh, Scumfop 16 now moving over from Sturton used to be 101 now Scumfop 16 and he took uh, third position as um, as said uh, Miller failed to finish. Steve Olive was a non-starter in race one but he joined in for race two but unfortunately he had to settle to run round at the back of the pack uh, with uh, the car not running happy but uh, Jason Miller then found his problems and got himself sorted and he led the uh, not the rerun the second race all the way to the flag uh, bagging his first points and much needed after obviously dropping 55 uh, from the first race. Sadie Hausman once again run very well, took second place uh, while Dad John finished third this time around. Fourth place once again went to um, Coupland and uh, Steve Olive was left to finish in fifth. So that means uh, the table at the moment sees a Sturton 1-2, but I feel all's going to change uh, later on. Sadie Hausman then sits top of the order on 100 points with uh, a first and a second for Sturton 1-1-3. John Hausman there second place in the table on 81 points with a second and a third. Uh, Craig Coupland, uh, Scumfop 16, is there on 64 points. That uh, DNF hurt uh, Jason Miller's point score as he ends up on just 55 points and finds himself fourth, but I'm pretty sure he will fight back. And then Steve Olive uh, with just the one points finish as well and finishing at the back means only 21 points for that solitary fifth place. If you want physical racing, Class 6 is where you need to be because that's uh, what they uh, got up to. Not too physical, but just enough contact to uh, whet the appetite for possible uh, future qualifying rounds. Uh, Jordan Couplin in Scumbolt 15 and Anthony Conway in Scumbolt 91 were the two to get close and personal in both races, but on both occasions it would be Conway who would actually come out best. Uh, he was lucky in race one though to get away with it because the bonnet uh, came unclipped on one side and was flapping a little bit but not enough to warrant uh, the dreaded black flag he was able to keep going he made the pass on uh, Coupland and uh, took the win uh, with uh, his uh, rival behind in second place Andy Wood has uh, made a move into class six and uh, settled in quite well in Sturton 46 he wasn't far away uh, in this one and took third position while uh, the two, uh, unfortunately, at the back of the field on this occasion was Steve Clark in Scumvolt 729 ahead of Leroy Cuff in Sturton 67. It was race two where the other drivers in, in the race wanted to get a piece of the action and we ended up with two not scoring. Um, we still saw uh, Coupland and Conway go at it with uh, Conway once again taking the win. 
But um, here we had uh, Steve Clark retire uh, with a bit of damage and Andy Wood was shown a black flag after uh, picking up some damage and it looked a bit uh, suspect so the marshals had to make the decision. But uh, that just left Leroy Cuff then to uh, finish in third place behind uh, Conway and Kuplin. The uh, points then, very quickly going after those little squabbles, sees Anthony Conway then on two wins, 110 points. Jordan Coupland, two seconds on 90. Leroy Cuff then, the only other one with two point scores, but he'll need to pick up the pace a little bit, I feel, in Sturton 67. Uh, he's there on 57 points. And uh, due to their non scores, Andy Wood is third, only on 36 in Sturton 46. And Steve Clark is there on 28 points. Like Class 7, Class 8 uh, is one of the ones which people love to see the pack grids for, but only seven of them here, and uh, with the ruling that meant a split of uh, three and four car races. A little disappointing to see, but not disappointing to see was Emily Gill, who was on blistering form. Uh, on that day in Scunthorpe 20 and the first heat she led all the way uh, taking a pretty dominant victory uh, Chris Juggins in Scunthorpe 50 uh, smoking a little bit and Dan Ray in Scunthorpe 31 rejoined Scunny after a year at Yorkshire Dales and uh, a bit of contact between the two saw uh, Juggins drop back a little bit and uh, Gill took the win as she pleased but Dan Ray uh, had to pass Dan Barnard in Scunthorpe 181 for second place and he did that right in the late stages and uh, Barnard relegated to third and Juggins in fourth. Uh, the three Sturton cars found themselves in race two and uh, first Lee Talbot suffered some serious understeering problems in Sturton 187 and then surprisingly Anthony Ross as well in Sturton 77 and that let Jamie Hornby through in Sturton 47 in the NEC show car and uh, he moved uh, clear as Ross just seemed a bit subdued and uh, didn't quite have an answer and he was relegated to second and that's where he stayed and uh, Talbot then uh, finishing in third. Uh, worst was to come for, for Anthony Ross though in the second heat and um, he ended up not finishing. He led the early goings, but was passed by Emily Gill, who uh, once again took a, a stunning victory. But Ross would then retire uh, the Sturton 77 car with some sort of problem and would not score any points. Um, I hadn't heard anything else which may have happened, so I was assuming it was just an issue. Um, but then uh, Gill took the win and uh, Dan Barnard was left in second place ahead of Lee Talbot. The last race saw Jamie Hornby lead all the way, but he picked up a green flag for collecting two cones collect two cones you collect a green flag and uh, that means he would be docked two places so uh, he had to win to get third place points even though there was only three cars in it if you finish lower than that you'll still get lower points so he needed the win and that's what he did but that penalty could come back to haunt him later on that gifted the victory then to Dan Ray in Scumfort 31 and Chris Juggins uh, in then moved up to second place in his Scumfort 50 and that uh, brings on the points then uh, Emily Gill on two wins 110 Dan Ray just behind on 100 uh, Jamie Hornby then 91 points but it could have been 110 matching Gill but uh, not to be uh, Dan Barnard then a third and a second that means 81 points ahead of Chris Juggins who sits there on 73 Lee Talbot is there on 72 and the one with it all to do is Anthony Ross in Sturt 77 at just 45 points Moving on to the last class then, class 10, and uh, Matt Barnbrook then looked to make the best start, but the car looked a bit of a handful, and it wasn't playing as he wanted in that Scumvolt 45, and then Sam Burbridge burst through in Sturton 40, and just ran away uh, with it in that, that one. Uh, Barnbrook would actually drop to third with his problems behind Jack Rawlinson, who had a dismal campaign last year in Scumvolt 93, running much better here, but no answer to Sam Burbage. Uh, so Burbage won, Rawlinson was second, and Barnbrook finished third. Rich Morehouse sadly wouldn't finish the first heat in Scumvort 101, parking up 
I think on the starts, finished straight, and that meant Dominic Wade was the only other runner in Scunthorpe 39. He will be the last of the completed finishers. Um, run two, saw all cars finish, but again, Sam Burbage was the one on form, Sturton 40. He didn't quite dominate, but he led all the way. Rawlinson closed him in towards the end, but uh, couldn't have enough time or speed to, to actually make his way past. And then uh, Barnbrook finished third once again, with Rich Morehouse scoring fourth place this time around, and Dominic Wade was the last one to finish in that final fifth place. So looking at the uh, class 10 points table then, it's uh, pretty much consistency for the top three in terms of uh, results. Sam Burbage, two wins for certain 40, 110 points. Jack Rawlinson, Scunthorpe 93 would finish second both times, so he's on 90. Matt Barnbrook, two thirds, would end up on 72 points. Uh, Dominic Wade would be on 49 points for a fourth and a fifth, with Rich Morehouse scoring just 28 points for that uh, one finish uh, result. So um, yeah, that's, that's all he would get. So, that completes uh, the 11 classes for the opening round of the 2023 CGTRO National Qualifying Campaign. Uh, rounds at two and races three and four will take place at Sturton and Stowe Motorsports Club at the Cambie Corner Raceway on Sunday the 30th of April. Uh, it's the last chance though for any other drivers to join in for the qualifying. You get up to round two to uh, join in. After that, no other drivers can take part if they haven't started rounds one or two. So, uh, but this is the last chance. And uh, then we are pretty much definitely on the road to see who's likely to qualify. So after this, we'll be at the halfway stage, four races down and four to go. We'll know who's looking favorite to uh, earn their spot. Uh, and then later on down the line, uh, the allocations will be released. And uh, we should know before the final round who is definitely in with a chance, who is actually going to need to try and uh, do their final races or not. And then we'll have some worthy qualifiers, hopefully, for when the championships arrive at the beginning of August. So that's it for now. We know how things are panning out so far and uh, we'll be back to review round two and races three and four after the next qualifying round at Sturton.